Ever since the beginning of time, man has tried to determine to the smallest degree where the sense of you is localized. Finally, man realized that learning cognition, emotion, homeostasis, and sex were all controlled by the brain. However, it wasn't until better microscopy and better histological techniques came around that we were finally able to understand and visualize single neurons and how they work. The famous scientist Ramon y Cajal put forth the neuronal doctrine, which states that individual neurons are the basic structural and functional unit of the ner nervous system. Indirectly, this doctrine has set the stage for illuminating the mind. And now to our future presentation. Optogenetics is an emerging field combining optical and genetic techniques to probe neural circuits within intact mammals and other animals at the high speeds needed to understand how the brain processes information. Do you get it? Lights plus genes equals optogenetics. If neuroscience can be considered the young child of the biology world, then optogenetics can be considered the newborn grandchild. Optogenetics works by incorporating rhodopsins or light-sensitive pigments to manipulate neural circuits. Classical techniques to manipulate neurons include electrical, genetic, and pharmacological methods. The disadvantages of these earlier techniques are that they affect surrounding cells in addition to the target population, they are slower and cannot be easily reversed. To overcome these limitations, microbial opsin genes have been developed that have greater cell specificity, are faster, and can be easily reversed through selective expression. These opsin genes encode for light-responsive membrane transport proteins. Three examples of these transport proteins and their microbial sources are CHR2 from Chlamydomonas rinhardi, VCHR1 from Volvox cateri, and NPHR from Natronomonas feronis. The light responsive rhodopsins used in these experiments can be activators or inhibitors. When a specific wavelength of light shines on cells engineered to express these activator molecules, there is an influx of sodium ions into the cell. This results in depolarization of the cell, turning the neuron on. When exposed to certain wavelengths of light, inhibitory rhodopsins result in an influx of chloride ions into the cell. This results in hyperpolarization, which silences the target neurons. By manipulating these two types of rhodopsins and the wavelengths of light, researchers can turn neurons on and off to uncover how neural circuits operate. In optogenetic behavioral experiments, each animal subject has an optical fiber tethered to the skull. In this video, neurons in the right motor cortex, which controls the left side of the body, were altered to express the ion channel, CHR2, which responds to blue light. When you see the blue light turn on in the mouse's brain, it instantly begins moving to the left in circles. When the light turns off, the mouse stops moving to the left.
Optogenetics is so appealing to scientists of many disciplines because it intertwines bioengineering, psychiatry, neurology, ecology, and basic science. When I say ecology and basic science, I mean finding uses of archaebacterium like the rhodopsin containing ones used in optogenetic experiments. The important uses of these microorganisms may halt destruction of their extreme habitats. However, many questions need to be raised, such as what will we be able to control? For example, controlling the hypothalamus with light will allow us to potentially re regulate hunger, thirst, hormones, and a myriad of other wants and needs. Philosophically speaking, what does it mean to want to do something? What is the neural code for want? All of these questions and more may be answered in the near future thanks to the advancing work of optogenetics.